4.15 a.m. The race to Catalina is on. I've got uh, good coffee brewing. Boat's mostly ready to go. I'll probably top off the water before I leave. Got all the canvas off. Mainsail's rigged. Ready to go. 5.30 a.m. update. Pretty easy departure from Dana Point. And it's already starting to get pretty light out. So I'm motor sailing right now. So it's about 10 till 6 a.m. Looks like I've got a little under six hours from here, give or take. So it'll it'll depend on the wind, but right now I'm getting a little over five knots, speed or ground, motor sailing. Things are going quite well. I'll probably put up the head sail, continue to motor sail though, just to keep my speed up if I had a little bit more wind, but I want to get into Avalon before uh, hopefully all the moorings are taken up. Seventeen. This guy just got pulled over here, about four miles offshore. Seven twelve a.m. update. Looks like uh, I have twenty-one and a half miles to get to Avalon. Doing a uh, little the high five, so I'm doing about five seven, five eight knots. Still motor sailing. Um, Looks like the wind's starting to clock around and shift, so it's going from southeast to southwest. And uh, then it'll settle in, I think it's southwest, uh, probably for the rest of the afternoon. First sighting of Avalon, or at least of Catalina, I can see it in the distance. Okay, 8 a.m. update. I am 17 miles out from Avalon. I'll be in the shipping lanes in a, in a little while. The only boat that, uh, the only ship that I see on AIS uh, that I may, may be interested in is this boat, this ship uh, over here. So I'll cross in front of him and he'll cross the stern roughly half hour behind me. 9 a.m. update. About 12 miles from Avalon. I'm in the shipping lanes, or I'm actually in the separation zone between the uh, northbound and southbound coastwise shipping lanes. I shut off the motor, I'm sailing. I'm, I'm maybe doing three and a half knots, so it's a little slower than I'd like, but um, I don't really care. I'm tired of listening to the motor. And so I called two harbors and Asked them what their mooring situation is, and they said they've got plenty of room. Don't worry about it. They've got rooms on both side of the, sides of the island. So my plan at this point is to go ahead and head up to the Isthmus. So 20 after 10, and we're a few miles off of Catalina, sailing away from Avalon now and heading to Two Harbors. I'm doing about three and a half knots, maybe a little bit better than that. So definitely going slower, but it's pretty peaceful not having to listen to the engine for a while.
All right, it's noon. Wind died down quite a bit, so I snuffed the, the head sail. At least the Genoa Stasel is still up, and it's not really doing anything. And the uh, rain is up, so there's a little bit of wind. Kind of an interesting uh, cloud effect. So you see a little bit of clouds right over the island. It's, it's nice and beautiful and blue. And then as you start to look east and south behind us, uh, looks like it's hanging right over the water, but there's actually pretty good visibility on the water. 47 p.m. Beautiful day out. There's bird rock. There's a uh, ship rock. It's a little bit smaller. Not sure how that'll come up. It's approaching two harbors. Okay, here's a better look at bird rock and ship rock. Slightly over to port is Emerald Bay. So I'm all tied up and uh, I'm almost down to the bottom of my beer. Perfect tie up at the mooring. You can't see it up there, but basically there's a wand tied to the can. You pick up the wand, you pull the board, and then there's a, there's a loop on the mooring line that you throw over your, your bow cleat. And then there's a sand line that comes all the way back. Um, if if I had a longer boat, there would be another loop here I could pull on. So right now I'm just tied up with the sand line. On this boat, there aren't any, any rub strakes back here. So either I need to put something down here for chafe protection or put some uh, rub strakes on it. So I, need so I was wondering how they're gonna collect payment. Um, it's pretty tired since I got up at four and I didn't really get much sleep on the boat last night. So as soon as I got here after I finished my beer, I took a Took a long nap and uh, woke up and I found this yellow card here on my boat. So it's pretty cool. Um, basically you just call 1-800 number, you punch in the number and you can punch in your credit card number and uh, you can pay for your mooring uh, just, just over the phone which isn't too bad. Now I'm working on dinner, bratwurst. And so begins the long slog home. All right, 7 a.m., been underway for about a half hour-ish since we left Emerald Bay. There's Emerald Bay behind us. There's uh, the isthmus back there. Bird Rock, Ship Rock. Looks more like uh, Maybe closer to 4 p.m. before wind up in Dana Point. It's a little earlier than I thought when I rechecked my math a little bit. Which isn't too bad. 
I'm debating on whether to uh, hang right, stay close to the island since it's going to be kind of a southwest wind, and then uh, uh, hang a left. I'll be motor sailing all day, but if I can get the wind to work a little bit in my favor, that'll be good. All right, so I've been underway for about 45 minutes or so now, coming out of Emerald Bay. Decided to. Uh, Wind's coming pretty much on my nose, so I decided to bear off about 20 degrees and put up the mainsail. Uh, been eyeing this, this ship, the shipping lanes. I want to pull this up and see if you can, hopefully this comes through. But if you look at the length, the length is measured in nautical miles. 0.181 nautical miles with a 140 foot draft, or sorry, 140 foot beam and a 42 foot draft. So let's take a look at that boat, that ship. That thing's an absolute monster. Look at that. So I'm not the best at identifying marine life, but I do have this awesome book, Field Guide to Marine Mammals of the Pacific Coast. I'm gonna dig through this a little bit and see if I can identify what I just saw swimming around out there. Seems like it's bigger than a dolphin, smaller than an orca, and there were several of them. All right. It's 8.30, about 34 miles left to go to Dana Point. This is looking all the way across the Santa Catalina Channel. I'm maybe six miles offshore, so that's about 20 miles away or so. You can look at, look at how massive the shipping infrastructure there is in Long Beach, San Pedro. So, check this out. Here's Catalina Island. This is uh, Long Beach, San Pedro. So look at all those little triangles. Those are all ships on AIS. Look at look at all the ships in here. So one thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is single line reefing. So if you look, I've, I've got three rope clutches on the starboard side of the cabin and a self tailing winch there, and then I've got similar configuration on the port side. In theory, all these all these lines, the halyards. The main, the staysail halyard are run aft. The Genoa, since it's on a furler, the uh, spinnaker halyards are both on, on the mast. Everything else comes back for the most part, including the, the boom bang on, on this side. And then I have two reefing lines for single, uh, single reef and uh, the second reef. And this boat was rigged by the prior owner with single line reefing, or one of the prior owners, I should say. So uh, here's the outhaul. And right now I've got the second reef in because I'm motor sailing, right? So it's just, uh, it's just this line tied with the bowline through, through, the, through the leech um, and, then, and then back. And then if you look down the mast, you'll, you'll see there's a block on one of those um, reef points hooked up. So the same line comes through this reef point, comes somewhere back through the mast, and then back here and attaches. Seems like a pretty nice thing. In theory, you can sit back here in the cockpit and just screw around with the main halyard and the, uh, and the reefing line and just put in one or two reefs Without ever having to leave and get up, you know, get up into the weather behind the Dodger that you know is keeping you out of the spray and everything else. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because you have to throw the vang off because uh, the booms the booms going to rise up and you can do that here. But then the other thing that I always forget, and I'll pan over this way again, is this this thing right here. That's the the topping lift goes all the way up to the to the masthead. So the topping lift just keeps 
the boom lifted when you don't have the sail up, so, so it keeps it down. When I reef the main, the boom sits lower, so I have to go release the topping lift. So where do I go release the topping lift? Well, I have to go back up to the boom because the line for the topping lift uh, control is back on the boom. Challenge with the single line reefing is you just, you can't always get the sail shape that you want with the single line. I really like having the bullhorn up at the stick that you can just um, hook onto. And even if, if for the outhaul, even if you're, if you're running um, that back to the cockpit, I think that's cool, that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, to manage and whether it's a, it's up here or there, I think at that point doesn't really matter. But for me, I think I'd prefer to have a, a bullhorn up there where I can control uh, the luff shape independently of the outhaul. The other issue is, is I've got this arch right here, which is for the bimini that extends to the Dodger. Doesn't you know? It doesn't really add a lot of value that. If, if you've got it closed off when you're sailing, you really can't look up and see what's going on with, with your main very easy. So you wouldn't be able to look up there and, and look at the shape of your main very easily without just put, popping your head back around and looking up or, or over to the side. It'll keep the sun off you. It's, if you're motoring, it's, it's okay, I think. But the other issue is, is look at the boom. The boom is pretty much sitting right on this, well, not pretty much, it is sitting right in this arc. There's been lots of traffic out here today, a few miles offshore. That, I'm going to guess, is a Mola Mola right there. I can see its body a little bit. You can see his fin. Just kind of popping up. 10 after 10 a.m. We're not at the shipping lanes yet. Uh, got a little bit more of a breeze, so sails are up and getting ready to hoist the staysail, but the engine's off. Uh, slowed down a little bit, so motor sailing. I was getting into the low to mid fives. So I'm probably cruising a little bit more around four knots right now. So the staysail is in this is in this uh, sail bag. I'll unzip zip the top, and then I'll hook up the halyard to. Uh, the staysail, and then there's a couple of sheets that will come back. The sheets, I'll, I'll need to run back to blocks on tracks on either side of the cabin top, and then those will go underneath the, through the Dodger, there's a hole on this side and, and, and one on the other side. That'll go back, and I'll just bring them back to the winches that are on the cabin tops back there. All right, it's about 20 after 10, a um, mile or so outside the shipping lanes, getting ready to hit them pretty soon. Sailing along roughly four knots. So I normally don't grill out on the open ocean, especially in the shipping lanes, but it's as calm here as it was at the mooring last night. So I've got some chicken burgers on the grill to one motor sailing winds been super flaky so I've had to keep the motor on put down the Genoa still rolling with the main and the staysail no contacts on radar nothing uh, really around put up the Bimini as it was heating up to get the Sun off me 10.5 miles to go so I'm uh, doing 4.8 knots right now, so I'll be there in a little over two hours. Uh, should be getting there pretty close to 4 p.m., give or take a few minutes. 
All right, 3 p.m. update. A little under four miles into to Dana Point. Pretty uneventful. I'm gonna take down the main here pretty soon. It's just kind of banging around. There isn't really any wind. So I'm gonna take down both sails. But you can get a good view of Laguna Beach, Dana Point, San Clemente.